What's up guys, welcome to Jew Whiskey, I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below, and with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Arden American Polonois 2023. Stick around. All right, so we're looking at an Arden American today. This one is the Paul Lanois release. I've got the 2023 edition with me. Apparently they've put out a few of these, uh, and apparently they've all been quite different. I wouldn't know, I've only tried this one. But expectations are high. This is an Arden American after all. Arden American always does really well with critics. These guys always clean up around Whiskey Tube award season. Uh, award season being like December when all of us put out our clickbaity best of year videos. So yeah, these guys are often the talk of the town and not just online, not just from critics. Uh, one recent review I heard came from my buddy Matt when he was discussing the AD release and he called it a fresh take on the Western Highlands profile that exceeds all expectations. And with regards to the Sherry Cask release, which came out last year and did very well, my buddy Mike described that as a sweeping Sherry epic that delights and dazzles the senses. And finally, of the cast strength release, my friend Barry said, fuck me, that's pretty good, isn't it? Now, obviously, you shouldn't always trust critics and what other people say, and you definitely shouldn't trust those guys. I mean, they are my friends, but just dickheads, all three of them. Regardless of that, if you've tried any Arden American for yourself, then you probably already know that this brand does indeed make good stuff. Uh, now, if you watched my top five best premium whiskeys of 2023, you'll know that this one was included on that list and that while I do love Arden American on the whole, I'm a particularly big fan of this one. So what do we need to know about this one? Well, unlike most other Arden Americans, this one has zero pita distillate in it. Uh, it was bourbon matured and then it was finished in uh, 10 Polonois champagne casks and apparently one bourbon cask for balance, I suppose. We had 2,676 bottles of this stuff made, all using Concerto Barley from Broomhall Farm. Uh, aside from being highly recommended by yours truly, this one in particular, basically like all other Arden Americans, has done really well with like reviewers and critics, etc. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess really there's not much of a mystery here as to whether or not I'm going to like this stuff. I will, but you should stick around to the end anyway, because honestly, I don't know. It's polite. I mean, I will give it a proper score later, so there is that. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Respects, this one comes in at a delightful 57.1%. It is non-chill filtered. It is natural color. For look, I'm always a fan of the Arden American bottles, whether it's the standard AD white, whether it's the sherry blue, the uh, cast strength black, they're always minimalist, they're stylish, this one's no different, I'm going to give this one 4.5 out of 5. The label does say non-chill filtered and natural color. As usual with Arden American bottles, we get a QR code on the back. The QR code then takes you to a website where it tells you pretty much everything you need to know short of what the master distiller had for breakfast this morning. So, great info, good looking bottle. I did not add any water here. On the nose, this is very bright, it's very orchardy, there's lots of like... Fresh apples, pears, peaches, guava, a lot of very like juicy stone fruit notes. There's also some darker fruity notes underneath, maybe like uh, berries, sweet blueberries maybe. Uh, there's things like vanilla, there's honey nut Cheerios, there's rum raisin, there's white wine, and there's like a slightly sour, yeasty, fermented type note. Really nice notes. On the palate and finish, this stuff is oily, it's mouth coating, we're greeted with some vanilla, which leads us into some drying white wine notes. We get stuff like rum raisin, there's sultanas, once again with like the banana bread and the honey nut Cheerios. There's apple vinegar, somebody on Whiskey Base wrote Calvados and absolutely. There's also yeast, there's white pepper, there's a lot of nondescript tropical fruit notes like yellow fruit notes, that kind of thing. This is the kind of whiskey that you could pull a lot of notes out, like there's good complexity here. Okay, so in a shocking turn of events, I absolutely love this one. It's pretty much exactly what I was hoping it would be. So Arden American have done it again. Uh, these guys are really, they're, they're like Babe Ruth. The moment their stick touches the ice, they just start kicking off slam dunk home runs from the three point line or something. I don't watch golf. Anyway, I'd say what's most impressive about this stuff is the cask influence. I would say that the champagne finish did exactly what it was supposed to do. It's there, it's apparent, it's integrated, and it complements the spirit nicely. 
These casts are not too loud, they don't overwhelm, and the flavors they impart are quite unique. They're different. I actually don't know why the industry doesn't use more champagne casts. I'm sure there's a reason, and I'm sure it's financial or some kind of trade thing. But regardless, uh, the few whiskeys I have had that had a champagne maturation or finish or whatever, I've quite liked. Like champagne tends to add some bright, clean white wine notes, which generally speaking complements the whiskey underneath very nicely, especially if it's a characterful distillate, which Arden American is. Arden American is already very fruity and vibrant on its own, especially as this one is entirely unpeated. So the result we have here is, um, well, I basically just described it. It's bright, it's clean, it's vibrant. This is driven by orchard fruits and white wine notes. Uh, this would work great for those of you who are fans of stuff like maybe Compass Box, Orchard House, or Glen Cadam Tan, that kind of like brighter Highland style. Imagine that kind of whiskey, but with more intensity, more complexity, more flavors, more layers, like, like these berry notes in here. So that would be the general gist of it. Not only that, our 57.1% ABV means our flavors in here pack a whole lot of punch. Uh, as is always the case with Arden American, they've done a great job at making this stuff taste way more mature and sophisticated than it has any right to for its young age. Uh, so this stuff is firing on all cylinders. Although it might not be for everyone, for those of you who are looking for Big Pete or Big Sherry, you might have to look elsewhere. You could even just look elsewhere in Arden American. These guys do have a variety in their lineup. So they've got their Sherry cast, they have their cast rent, the regular AD. Those all do something different. This one is more on the dry side. It is less coastal and it leans a lot more into that sort of brighter white wine type of flavor. So if that's what you're looking for, this one will deliver. Just know that this is very different from the rest of the lineup, but I think they nailed it. Um, by the way, now would be a great time to remind you guys that I'm not paid by Arden American, although I really should be. I have no integrity and I'm absolutely for sale. Then again, I'm already shilling for them for free, so what would be the point? Anyway, whatever they did to this stuff, I think it really worked out. Uh, as I've mentioned before, this is among my favorite Arden Americans, and that really is saying something. I think this is very much in line with my style of whiskey, even though typically they do tend to lean a little bit more coastal and have that gentle peat influence, which is also very much my style. But this one, I don't know. I'm connecting with this bottle. I love it. So my score here is going to be 90 points. I think it's phenomenal. I think a white wine slash champagne flavor profile up against an unpeated Arden American worked out fantastically. Now, the issue is I'm not sure uh, if you can find this one. I don't think it's available in most markets anymore. I think it's already sold out. Still, if you do happen across this bottle in the wild, I do recommend picking it up. Even though it's not a cheapie, if the description sounds interesting to you, I think you are going to enjoy it. And keep in mind, even if you miss out on the 2023 release, it is an annual release and we'll be seeing another one later this year. All right, so I do think we get good value here. I picked this one up in um, Austria, I believe, when I was on a trip over the summer and I paid about 90 euros for it. So just under 80 pounds, just under 100 bucks. and. You know, it's not cheap, but it's not crazy expensive either. And I absolutely do think it's worth it. I already bought a backup. Okay, so that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help out the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Always appreciated. And I want to hear from you. Have you tried the Paul Noir 2023? Did you like it? How would you compare it to other Art Americans? How do you feel about value? All of that down below, as well as any suggestions or ideas that you might have for the channel. I'll keep those in mind as well. Bye, guys.